Yes. Hey everyone, <laughs> I'm super excited to have uh, yet another graduation call with one of my rockstar clients. I have Aishwarya Subramanian joining me from Zurich. And uh, hi Aishu, how have you been? Good, I've been good. It's nice. Congratulations. To be here. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, yeah, just we were talking a couple of minutes ago about how time just flies. Uh, it's been six months already. And uh, we're going to spend uh, the next uh, about an hour uh, recounting our journey together and talking about the specific skills and habits that we focused on, things that yeah. we had to unlearn, things that we had to learn new, and uh, set the path ahead for her future. And mm -hmm. uh, I sure if you can just take a couple of minutes to share a little bit about yourself, just give an intro. Okay. Please. Yeah, just for an intro. So, uh, yeah, everyone calls me Aish because a lot of people here can't pronounce my name. But uh, yeah, I've been living and working in Zurich for a little over six years. And this year, okay, I'm still working in the same place as like six years ago to now. So not much improvement there. But this year I got to travel so much and see so much of the world. And I realized that, okay, while I did start exercising and thinking about healthy habits and healthy living, I didn't really know how to go ahead or what to do or where to start. And which is why I think it was really awesome that I could speak to you and just get some guidance through the last few months. And I'm really grateful for that. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that, Aishu. So you were basically kind of in a confused state. Uh, you wanted yeah. to improve your lifestyle, right? Improve your health. Also work on improving your body composition. Uh, yeah. Understand how nutrition plays a role in that and how to really go about that. That was your and just starting point. To, and also how to do it in a simple way, which is not over the top restrictive or so controlling that I don't get to enjoy. But a mix of everything like a mix of a lot of different combinations to do easy food to make sure I either exercise or go on walks or just keep myself busy and still have the energy to do as much as I can mm. so, so sustainability yeah. was very important as much as uh, making sure this is not a restrictive step uh, uh -huh. that you're putting yourselves through so um, nice to hear that issue so a lot of people have this question in them and I'm sure this call is going to really help clarify so many things for them. So um, quickly, before we um, move ahead, Aishu, if you can just share what made you invest in a coach? Why did you think you couldn't do this by yourself? I think, so, well, last year I had quite a bit of therapy and I the one thing I learned was I, do, I don't have to do everything by myself. I can always ask for help and if I have someone's guidance through the couple of changes and just giving me feedback and I think that sort of input helps me a lot and I like that and it works for me it's okay of course I could read online and get all the information I want but it's not specific and it may not work to my lifestyle or my daily routine so I, I wanted someone who I could talk to and just get some input and see, okay, you know, with what I have and what I, how I am and my routine, how can I put it all together? And I like to take help. So all in all, <laughs> that Thank was my sharing that. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that, um, you know, uh, sharing your vulnerability, you know, in understanding yeah. that, hey, there's only so many things that I can do by myself and it's absolutely um, okay to take help, right? It's good to take and, help, like, Maybe someone else has a better idea of things than you do. And that's good. Nice. For you, it was all about collaborating as a team, uh, bouncing off ideas, uh -huh. figuring out what works for you, and also making sure that the plan was customized to your lifestyle choices and preferences so that Pretty you could just much, carry yeah. this forward. It feels sustainable, right? When it is that way, rather than focusing on a strict program. And then when you're off, yeah. you don't know what what helped you get wherever you want it to be. And or even how... even when I'm on holidays, I didn't really know how to just go about thinking of food or exercise. And now I'm like, okay, you know, I know I can do this. I know what I can look out for, how I can make up. And it's just a little bit more sustainable and a healthy way of doing things instead of eating a lot and then feeling guilty later. So, which I used to do um, okay. quite a lot. So, so having that kind of confidence while traveling, and I know you did quite a bit of traveling, a lot, lot of relocation, you know, talk a about lot, relocation yeah. from Singapore to Zurich, and then even yeah, yeah, within 
outside of you know in europe traveling with friends having oh, yeah. taking vacations it was a lot of change in the last one year so yeah all in all i think it was for the good that i decided to do this i am super happy to have been a part of the journey with you ashu <laughs> thank you <laughs> so let's talk about your initial goals when you joined the coaching program and how have they evolved over the last 6 months so when i joined i think it was the time when i had it's been around 4 or 5 months that i was starting to do crossfit but i could see myself getting stronger but i was still putting on weight so i realized okay i'm doing something wrong and what i wanted to know is how i can get better at exercise and i can eat properly to make sure that i'm you know eating enough of the right things and the healthy things so that i can just improve and also work better it just like a lot of things that i wanted to do for myself but i didn't really know how to go about it because the only exposure i had was to people who were doing keto diets which are so restrictive and it's not for me and i wanted to still eat everything and you know i didn't really know i didn't have so many ideas of what to do how to eat like my easiest meal plan was risotto that's a very heavy very carby <laughs> meal yeah. it's amazing for once in a while but not weekly so i was making a lot of small mistakes like that which i didn't really think about and it was to actually figure those out see where i can improve and some things it's kind of easy not super complicated because i realize i don't have the time to do everything and for me convenience is also a factor in doing a lot of things so yeah super so it was it was about you initially started off with wanting to build long term sustainable habits improve eating yeah. habits and nutrition um improve your body composition right get yeah. stronger that is again one of your goals so somewhere you you understood that you were working out and somewhere it was not giving you the results that you were seeking in terms of body composition yeah. so that was something that you wanted to fix right? which means i was doing something wrong right and i couldn't figure out where i was doing something wrong so it's always good to talk about it with someone who has a little bit more a lot more experience than me and fine i have coaches here at crossfit or someone but i think culturally it's a lot more different to speak to someone who's here versus someone who's a lot closer to my eating habits my daily routine or just can relate a lot better mm. so in the indian context you wanted some help who was uh, who had the expertise to help you with uh, indian foods and also vegetarian food right yeah. i think that is something which, how to plan your protein yeah uh, all of that could be a challenge so that's exactly. one of the reason and how did you think your goals evolved during the time that we worked together uh, ishu so i think my goals are somewhat still in line i still want to get stronger i still want to eat right but now it's eating right not eating better and it's also okay i need to drink more water i need to make sure i sleep properly it's a lot of things that are now more of like long term goals and not just like a six month thing it's things that i want to do regularly enough mm. so that's how i see it because my goals are still the same i still want to keep going for class i still want to do a lot of things i still now i even start to thinking about okay you know maybe i can take up swimming because it doesn't require so much equipment it's getting cold so i can look at something else also as an exercise instead of being like no i'm scared of swimming or i'm too afraid to do something but just okay give it a try it's not so bad so it's more of like an evolving goal than just staying the same absolutely so, so initially your thought was hey i need to work on my diet i need to work on improving my exercise consistency but now i think yeah. it's it's more broader right it's it's it broader is, in yeah. terms of looking at sleep recovery stress oh, management yeah, also, yeah mindset getting out of your limiting beliefs allowing yourself oh, to have fun right yeah uh, and piecing all of this together your planning prepping and all of that yeah yeah right super so um aisha can you share some of the key uh, milestones or moments of success that you experienced during our time together okay so i think one of it uh, which is probably one thing i really like that we started off with was countering on a habit that i i like 
which I really love reading books and I whether it's in an audible format or a kindle format or whatever it's like okay you know just take time out to do this because I love to do it and I wasn't before so with this it was like okay every day where can I find a little bit of time to either listen to my book or read it or now I think at least when I'm going to work and back I have a good 25-30 minutes where I listen to my audiobook and then on the weekends I'll sit and read so it's just like these small habits which I'm able to put together that's one then it was how to actually portion my meals because I didn't really know how to do that or I didn't know where to start so it was really good to know okay you know I need some amount of protein so that could be paneer or sprouts or chole rajma again not very restrictive because if you look at a keto diet or some something else it'll be like no no you can't eat this or you can't eat that or it's not going to be enough but it's nice to think okay no it's enough and then put some salads on the side and then then I started reading a little bit more and I realized okay some other foods like kimchi or dark chocolate or are also good for you. So I started adding that to my meals as well. And then you give me ideas of the summer rolls or protein, uh, like the protein powder in my oats. Again, like small things like that made it so easy to just have a nice enough routine. And to do that and continue with my exercise, which makes a really big difference. And also you told me how I could manage my time better with the Pomodoro techniques and just switching off the phone or putting like a 25 minute timer or just organizing my tasks in a better way that's actually come quite a long way and I really Ah. like that yeah super so starting off with a small tiny five minute action kind of set the ball rolling for the rest of the habits right it built a lot of confidence it was something that that you liked yeah yeah it felt doable you really enjoyed doing it and that's how every single habit was built or stacked together, right? So yeah. first we started off with book reading. And then, of course, what you found as uh, milestones or moments of success was learning how to play to your knee. That was crucial for you. Oh, that especially was really when you're, me. Right? Yeah. I mean, if you're looking for weight loss or even from nutrition perspective, meal satisfaction, satiety, uh, yeah. When, you, when you're talking about weight loss or improving your body composition, it's all about portion control. So how do you do that? How do you make sure you're going ahead with making improvements towards that goal without feeling starved? So can you tell me, Aishu, at any point in time, did you feel deprived or starved of your favorite foods? Actually, no, I didn't. Because like you said, I was traveling a lot this year, a little too much now. I don't want to move anywhere. I was traveling a lot and then with some of your ideas was really helpful like okay look for a hummus look for eggs look for chole look for beans look for mushrooms for example you get like really nice sauteed mushrooms so even if I would eat a pizza or waffles or something I know okay and this meal fine you know I ate this because I was in the mood but the next one okay I'll look for some eggs or I'll go to the grocery store and buy myself some fruit or a protein shake just to keep that balance and not to feel so guilty about eating and just to enjoy it and think of it more in a positive way saying okay you know this is what I ate today how can I compensate if I've not eaten something else and in the last few okay when I was in Singapore again I realized that I haven't eaten enough fruits so when I came back the first thing I did was buy lots of fruits and keep and just eat them because fine I was eating healthy but I feel like maybe I was missing out on vitamins and minerals. But again, this thought came to me because like we've been talking and I realized that, okay, maybe my plate for a meal is good, but I'm still deficient in something. It was just that conscious thought that, hey, you know, maybe you need to think about this and just go back and eat some fruits or somehow make sure it's two or three fruits in a day because you haven't eaten some before. And also, like I told you, I like to eat with chopsticks because it slows me down. So I yeah. started doing that. <laughs> that was a really cool hack, Aisha, seriously. Um, it, yeah, I am better at it now, but it still like consciously takes me time to pick up one one piece and eat it. So <laughs> Yeah, you do funny, get better but... better from practicing the skill. Now you've got to find another way to kind of slow you down. <laughs> it's, it's fine. If I'm in office, it's okay because I have enough to talk about with people that I end up talking more and then I slow down my eating and then it's nice. okay. It's, it's not so bad. But yeah. So it was, it was the mindfulness and self-awareness yeah. um, 
relating to nutritional habits and just and just being more aware kind of helped you yeah. make better choices or think about reflect i mean we talk about how reflecting on your actions helps you actually course correct and take a proactive step the next time right so that yeah pretty much something true. again right so when you reflect on your meal you are able to make better choices or you can think like hey you know what i'm missing out on fiber or i'm missing out on protein how can i yeah. do this a little bit better in my next meal so all of this really helped you imbibe all of these as habits right yeah it really gave me some and also i like you know i like to plan so i may not plan my meals in so much detail but i'll be like okay this <clears throat> this week fine i may have protein coming from paneer but next week i'll buy sprouts and then the other week i'll do chole so again it was nice to have these options in my head that i can go for whenever i want to put a meal together so i was a little bored with paneer last week so i bought those nice moong sprouts and i put that in a salad ah. or i put that in summer roll or i just put it in a khichdi so i could do a lot more with what i have available and i like that super so it was um it was basically made very simple for you with the choices that are available i mean living abroad yeah. i have a lot of clients living abroad uh, i show uh, and also i am in conversation with a lot of people abroad so um mm. talk about how it was made simple for you in terms of choices well because you actually just open my eyes saying okay you know you don't have to buy tofu all the time i'm a little conscious about tofu because of my high thyroid so you said okay you, i don't have to go for that i can go for paneer i can go for sprouts i can go for chole or rajma or you know maybe just get like a nice hummus dip and eat it with some veggies or there were just so many more options than i realized because earlier again my thoughts were quite limited saying if i have to have chole there's more carbs than protein in chole is that good is that bad but now i realize no it's it's a seed or it's a legume which fine it has its balance of carb and protein but it's much more healthier than going out and eating a bread so and then like you said i could even have yogurt with it or uh, i don't know there were like a few other options i found some mozzarella which is a high protein mozzarella how much i don't know but i do a salad with egg and the mozzarella and avocado it's just such a filling meal that i'm still having fun with it so super i like and, that and one of your strengths uh, aishu is you are a planner we basically I unlocked or brought that in right as a, <laughs> as one of the skills to help you plan i like to plan. so i think <laughs> anticipating like hey i have a workout in the evening what can yeah. i have before what can i have after so yeah, yeah. that kind of helped you put together your meals in a much better way right i think yeah it really did it helped organize so what, it Uh, of all the habits i issue what do you think um, made the most significant impact on your journey i think meal plating and eating slowly i think those two have had like the biggest impact i conscious okay i've told you a few times i would start eating and i'm like wait why am i eating so fast what is my rush here we i have a good half an hour 45 minutes before i need to go back so what is my hurry i can eat slowly and it's fine if everyone waits for me they can of course leave if they have to go somewhere but it was just why why am i in a rush just enjoy my meal i've taken time and effort to prepare it 5 minutes but it's still effort <laughs> nice <laughs> so tell and me i, uh, I should super so meal uh, planning and uh, eating slowly where yeah. they the two uh, where they the two habits uh, i should Yeah. So in in what way do you think it helped you Aishu? Uh so the meal planning because it's more of a conscious effort now. So earlier I I of course mentioned this. If I was hungry my first go to was a bag of chips. It was always either a bag of chips or a bag of cookies. And now it's a little bit more intentional to be like hey do I really need to eat that because what is it giving me not much? let me go for something else maybe let me do a summer roll which i find really exciting because it takes me 5 minutes and it tastes so good with some nice soy sauce and chili sauce or i would do a nice salad or i would do paratha with sabzi or just a roti roll or just something else 
instead of this or i'd buy like a pack of hummus and eat it with some biscuits or with some carrot or something you just i feel like i have a lot more options hmm. and i don't have those cravings anymore which i really and how long has it been i think it was couple of months into our program you realized oh my god i have not dug into a bag of chips. i said how long so has once it been? in once in a- while i do buy like uh, i think i bought one two or three weeks ago but it was a small packet just because i felt that hey it's been a while so let me but once i was done i didn't feel that urge to go back and get some more it was like a really small one time thing but i don't have that push anymore saying hey you know what this is going to make me feel better mm. and how long has it been since you emotionally ate or stress ate or you know any kind of binge eating So I did that a few weeks ago when I came back from Singapore because I had some quite some news which came my way and I didn't really know how to process it but a day or two later I was like hey this is why I'm binge eating I am upset and I don't know what I'm doing that's why I'm eating five chocolates for breakfast and it was just that realization to okay you know what you need this right now and it's okay but you need to get your shit back together because this is not good for you so it took me some time to figure that out but all in all it was good so again so, the skill of pausing reflecting um, yeah it is i was usually insights. reflecting afterwards but yeah it really helped Super. so and um, and can you tell me um, any habits that were particularly difficult or challenging to change and how did you think you worked through that oh i don't know which ones were difficult to change I need to think about it because I think most of them I was like okay you know I think I can do most of these habits maybe it was the drinking water with my meals one because that mm. I had to intentionally make changes like carry a water bottle with me or just do intentional changes because the others were more reflective and I could in the moment be like hey you know I'm eating too fast calm down or this is how I'm feeling let me think about it let me not react So I think that was actually weirdly one of the toughest ones for me to do. So drinking water and also I think there was a uh, a uh, couple of things thrown into the mix in the sense that you used to work half time uh, at work and also at home oh, yeah. so kind of pivoting those kind of balancing to those suit yeah, the environment places, you know that yeah. was it was also so How did you how did you think you navigated that issue? Well actually I got some good suggestions from you so that helped. <laughs> uh and then just intentionally if I'm packing my bag pack it properly and like the night before or just keep the water bottle somewhere close by I have it here as well but okay. yeah small things like this that I have to consciously make an effort to do that otherwise I probably wouldn't have and no and sometimes I have noticed that some days I drink a lot more water than others but like you said it it's okay day to day maybe my needs are different and i see how i feel at the end of it so yeah i even noticed that that was a little weird that one day i drank 2 liters and the other day just one and a half and it still felt okay so yeah so learning about all then, of these right of the old beliefs and thought process that we build because of old experiences yeah there there was a lot more clarity to your actions why certain things are happening uh-huh. this way or what works for you trying to discern between what's what's good what's bad you know what doesn't work or what um, works for me yeah yeah learning what works for you was very crucial for you now okay. um, we talked about time management and prioritization of uh, yeah practices that work for you practice prioritization of your tasks at work mm. um, how did that really help you aishu I think it helped me be a little bit more organized because I think at one point there was too much for me to do and I think I was not able to give good enough focus to everything so it then became important for me to figure out what I need to do first next and then how to go about it where should again depend so tomorrow I've taken off so this week my focus has been kind of clear these are the things I need to do and once I'm done with that if I have some free time pick up something else advise tell people hey this is all i can do now and i will push the rest to next week so again being pretty clear about that helps me quite a bit mm. so communicating clearly um learning yeah. to push back 
drawing boundaries right oh it really uh, really helps really help right and uh, also the pomodoro technique yeah assigning uh, a set number of uh, set uh, minutes of time towards your work can you tell me how this impacted your pro- productivity during the day aishu well i think it made it easier for me to complete quite a set of tasks within a day that okay assuming i have i have a set of distractions which come my way even with that i was able to just still complete my tasks this morning i got some message asking to help them out with something but i mentioned hey i would love to but i have these priorities for today which i need to finish i will set some time up for next week and then we will go through it there so again it's easy for me to figure out okay this is important but not urgent uh, like you had shown me that hierarchy important and urgent thing so i was able to figure out okay where does this lie for me right now it's wow. important but i will do this later super stuff okay. aishu so how would it have been before the program i think so one i would have realized that it's important but maybe i would have taken time out today itself to help them out and it would have affected something else and maybe that's not okay mm. so so taking it's just on like a more conscious effort than anything else taking on more work than what you can handle so right now i would say you've become more cognizant of your workload what you can actually handle yeah. and learning and- to prioritize and get the most important or urgent stuff done right uh, i would say not just that because i remember you mentioned the notice and name thing and that helped a bit because so i have to now start taking some interviews with people and i realized when i was setting up some interviews my colleagues said hey we can do this together and for a moment i was like why am i upset about this and i realized because he usually steam rolls and takes over the entire interview so i said okay you take the first half an hour then i will do it or you know if you want to take it together you can speak more on the first bit and then let me take over and take my question so again it was good for me to realize hey why am i feeling this way there is something and i could figure out how to fix it and go ahead so ah kudos to you aishu uh, not easy at uh, all and uh, the notice and name skill actually is a game changer for all my cl- uh, clients who have gone through this and i'm so happy this is yeah. really helped you understand or or actually challenge your emotion like what's really going on why am i feeling upset right? no, be a little bit more curious yeah even the other day so there was this girl who was trying to push and be like Let, let's meet let's meet let's meet and i knew i had a really busy schedule but she's kind of forcing her way so i said okay you know let's meet for a little while then she's like no let's meet at your house and i was like no i am not comfortable with this for some reason i don't like you pushing yourself on me so we will meet outside and even there she's like oh you know i wanted to meet you since so long but my husband is not there so i was like yeah this is why you want to meet me right now because you are free but i am not exactly free i've had a long day i'm exhausted so like calm down i like you but don't push this so <laughs> wow again for me to like notice and be like no i i don't want to deal with this bullshit right now and i can do it later when i'm a little free and i don't have so much to do but yeah it's it's kind of nice for me to realize all of this and just brush it under saying okay i'm just a little annoyed right now and just let it go so hey i'm i'm curious aishu with with these kind of changes or transformation that you're noticing about the way you're responding you know the way you're processing your thoughts your yeah. emotions what impact has it had on your mental emotional health and your stress now versus before like maybe 6 months ago what would have what would the scene have been and wh- what is it right now i think i would have been a lot more annoyed 6 months ago without realizing why or figuring out a way to get out of it so i still met her it's not like i had regrets or anything but just i figured out a way to get out of it much sooner i figured out how to make sure that she does not come home because i didn't want i love inviting people home but sometimes when you're pushing like this i don't want to so yeah maybe i'd be a lot more annoyed 6 months ago a lot more irritated and now it's like okay you know what you need to deal with this because everything is not about you i am not comfortable with this and i'd rather we meet outside and for a short time because i'm busy it's not like i'm free mm. so not available for everyone and uh, every part of the day right you have your yeah. own 
priorities again understanding what is exactly. important for you and allocating time for that right? yeah so aishu um can you tell me how is your mental and emotional health now pretty good actually so again it, even in the start it would take a lot to get me angry or upset but now it's a lot it's a lot more clear about what i'm thinking how i'm feeling and how i would navigate this than just take it for granted or i know how to deal with these situations for myself better mm. okay so pivoting a little bit away from mental emotional health to sure. physical health right of course nutrition also plays a role in your mental emotional health but let's talk about your relationship with food now versus before aishu a uh, pretty good i'm actually excited for all of my meals so <laughs> whether whether i'm making it myself or eating outside i'm usually quite excited about it and i make sure i get a good variety of everything that i want to do or eat so, so what do you think contributed to that uh i would say the meal plating and all of the ideas that you gave me so a lot of them were really yeah. fun like something simple like sabudana or poha or just oats with the protein or the summer rolls or ramen like sometimes i just make it at home it's super easy but just like small things like this which i know i really like and i can make for myself it's just exciting so and critical question forward. that everybody thanks thanks uh, so much for sharing that aishu so you look forward to your meals um yes. important question that everybody has in their mind is how do i improve my consistency with my meals how would you answer that aishu who the only way i have done it is i mean i keep all the healthy stuff in my fridge that's all because sometimes i know when i come home and it's between 6 and 7 in the evening i'm super hungry and if i have some crap i will eat that first so instead i keep either some fruits or some carrot or the hummus or some peanuts or something else uh, or some cheese like sometimes i have like the string cheese just a little bit and i eat that and i'm like okay i'm feeling better then maybe let me go make my dinner maybe let me make something else because otherwise i think if i had some snacks at home i would most definitely eat that first and fill myself up and then wonder hey i'm not hungry anymore maybe let's not have dinner so for me it was more of the snack controlling part than my main meals because main mm-hmm. meals you can think about you can plan you can be you can say okay for lunch i want to do this dinner i want to do that but this usually is to throw my whole plan in disarray saying hey i'm hungry right now i don't have enough time to make something so let me just quickly eat so those are unexpected uh, episodes yeah. of snacking right so typically the meal consistency the overall meal consistency was taken care of by shopping yeah, planning just, yeah, just keeping stuff but meal plating skills uh, yeah but the unexpected snacking was taken care of by making sure <laughs> making sure your environment is set for your goals right you have <laughs> access to goal friendly foods and yeah. of course you you we worked on skills if you were to come across a bag of chips what skills to actually work on right look away <laughs> <laughs> i mostly just look away like no they're not there go pick something else up go i don't know just figure something else out but don't go there i still do that sometimes i'm a little right. stronger but sometimes i'm like no. <laughs> so in those instances would you say you're prioritizing your long term goals i issue because it's there's something called i think short term so, gratification yeah. and lo- and delayed gratification oh right? yeah yeah where you are saying hey you know what having this right now is is going to probably help me feel good temporarily but is it really adding value to where i want to be you know those, oh, those yeah. kind of thought process and questions i think that i've done that a lot because i told you i started with the fasting schedule and yesterday it was i i could eat after like 12 till 9 and someone in the office had bought like a huge bag of lint chocolate and just oh, left no. it oh no so hard <laughs> but i just took some kept it at my desk saying eat it after 12 don't eat it before but i luckily it's an office so you're busy enough to think about other things and enough distractions that okay you know i know it's there it's in my drawer but i'm not going to eat it now so that that is super hard i issue having it right hard. next <laughs> i think that having that time time really helped 
Oh yeah, yeah. If for me, it's like okay after this, like after this time, then you're free to eat some stuff. Not not a lot. But again, I picked like the dark chocolate in that because I know that's good for my gut. So I say okay, ah, you know, nice. You See, you still it, made a better choice. Chocolate. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I was thinking so we, about it. <laughs> and we also talk about how you call upon the inner parent when the inner child is yeah. throwing tantrums, right? You call upon the inner parent to kind of. Uh, you know pretty uh, much yeah put some sense into that inner mm-hmm. child and say hey come on you cannot you cannot have this right now yeah pretty so, much so let's talk about exercise consistency and yeah. how you've been able to see changes uh, in terms of strength improvements i should in in the last 6 months so well <clears throat> one is i've tried to increase the number of classes i go to so i joined crossfit because it's like a group class i have company other people are suffering with me and i have a coach so someone who's actually watching what i'm doing versus me at the gym who doesn't really know what to do and who has to do everything by myself i prefer there's a coach who's watching and giving me tips and pointers and saying okay you know what i think you're doing well enough go increase your weight but i have noticed quite an improvement even with all of my breaks and my travels and everything i've noticed quite an improvement in the last 6 months because first i could barely do shoulder presses with like 7 kg bar and the other day i could do it with like a 15 bar with i think half a kilo or 1 and a half kilo on each side Ooh, so i was like oh, nice i could do this i could not for myself i could not believe it because for me that's a really tough exercise since it's literally just my hands going up so I can see the improvements, and even for things like wall walks, which were really tough for me before. Again, I feel like my shoulders have gotten stronger, so I can go a little bit further, not to the wall, mm. but like a seventy degree angle, so better. Nice. So slowly, slowly, I know there's improvement. Again, this was something I wanted, and I can see that now. So that's good, Super. and I'm excited to so- go to class. <laughs> nice so we started off with two times a week and then we slowly got it to three are you yes. at three right now uh, so now i mostly do like three or four three or four that's fantastic depending and on my week so three or four super so showing up consistently at crossfit coupled with your nutritional practices I think and it really helps sleep and recovery. You know, I think that's that's something that we are going to talk about next. But focusing on recovery, making sure you are sufficiently nourishing yourself with yeah. protein, water intake, all of these come together. It's not just one element, right? Yeah, it's, maybe it's yeah, you show up consistently for exercise. Yes, you will see improvements. But when all of these pieces come together, it's a different it level of a, progress that you see. It has a big impact. Yeah, <laughs> right. So let's talk about your um, sleep patterns and recovery and. Uh, how have they impacted your uh, overall well being and also your exercise uh, i should so i told you i think in the start i was going only for twice a week class because i thought that i couldn't recover fast enough but i think with eating properly and drinking enough water my recovery has definitely improved so that's why i can do a class on like monday tuesday thursday and saturday because i know i can recover fast enough If some days I think I'm too tired, then I'll do Monday, Tuesday, and then just take a break till Saturday. So I can figure it out for myself as it goes. And again, like I know my watch tells me how much energy I have in the morning, but I don't usually just go by that because it may not know everything. So I get up and I decide, okay, I'm feeling fresh enough that okay, I can still do my class. But if some days I feel a little overwhelmed, I say, yeah, I can do it later. It's okay. we can do it later it's not a problem so super yeah so adding protein consistently again that's a big uh, win uh, when you yeah. think about uh, strength improvements it really adds a lot of value actually so even think- without going for class i still have my night protein because i feel like i should continue that since my meals don't really have so much or even if they do it's not enough so i still have like my night protein and that helps like last night i had and today i could stay till like 12 o'clock and not feel so hungry but also what you mm. told me if i'm feeling hungry the first thing is drink water maybe you're thirsty that helps so much i forgot to mention that oh thank you for sharing that absolutely that's really a game changer for a lot of people um you know when you thirst and hunger mimic each other so 
when we think it's hunger it could be thirst so it's always better to which i never really think realized last, so yeah super so we touched upon um, notice a name as a practice to mm-hmm. understand or get a little bit more insights into your thoughts and emotions uh, i should yeah. so let's talk about stress management how has this practice really helped you uh, in terms of regulating your emotions or regulating your response to people can you talk a little bit about that aisha so i think it helps in just taking a pause because sometimes i don't really realize what i'm feeling because i told you that day when my colleague said we do the interview together i had a moment of what i knew it was a reaction to something and i just took a moment saying okay why am i feeling like this there is some reason and i remember at past interviews with him he just steam rolls he takes over and i don't get to ask my questions or get some feedback so i realized where that came from and i could act on that and it really helps to just stick that pause and realize hey how am i feeling right now or when this girl was trying to push my boundaries and be like no 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 you have to be free right now this day i've been trying to catch you for months no the last time she messaged me was june or like august i don't and it's october like come on everybody is not free when you are free just i have other things to do as well so it's much nicer to realize these things and just not take it for granted at least for mm. me so yeah. the skill is really helping you take a pause not react but respond um, yeah again i mean it's fa- favoring your position right it's it's all yeah. about you taking care of yourself your yeah, mental it's and not that i have to be aggressive or assertive or anything just to realize how i'm feeling and how i want to be as- respond to it so yeah i'm not like a rude person so i i will say things in a nice way even keeping my distance so that's that's fine again that's okay super yeah. so let's talk about mindful eating skills i should can you share your experience practicing mindful eating and how it has impacted your relationship with food or the way you enjoy your food yeah so like i said i it took me a while to actually eat mindfully which is why the chopsticks or the talking or being distracted during my meals really helps because otherwise i don't know we always grew up in this thing that we have to eat fast and then just go do the next thing or eating should not be a leisurely activity so again it took me some time and even now sometimes if i'm starting and i eat too fast i'm like wait why am i eating so fast i take a moment pause and then i start eating slow or i end up packing like a really big salad which of course takes so much chewing that people are done 15 minutes before me and i'm still slowly eating because it's so much kai that okay it takes me some time and be like a decently sized bowl because again i want a good enough meal that i'm not hungry in 2 hours and 4 5 hours is again good for me but <laughs> yeah it it's taken some time to actually do it but uh, i think i really like that also the the one that you mentioned eat and then see how you feel 10 15 minutes later because maybe you're already full and you don't realize it so i think that also helped quite a bit so when i eat slowly i say okay you know i've eaten most of my meal do i really want to eat some more do i really think i'm going to get hungry and if i think yeah because it's a salad then i eat the whole thing but again i eat it slowly i take slightly long but uh, like yesterday i was really hungry in the evening so i had bought like a bread and i ate it and when i came home i thought okay i'll eat some summer rolls and some soup but while i was eating the summer roll i realized hey i'm feeling quite full now so maybe i stop so i was able to again realize how i'm feeling and stop and mm. not push myself further which which is nice i i don't know if i realized all of this before but it's kind of nice to just be aware yeah and uh, it puts you in a really empowering position where you're able to make these decisions right by yeah. yourself rather than yeah. wait for somebody to tell you what you need to do it this this knowledge or the skills that you're learning you're equipping yeah. yourself these are life skills that are going to stay with you forever right yeah. so we we talked about so many different practices relating to mindful eating why shu which do you think was an aha moment or a game changer for you uh well i don't remember one exact one but i think it was just more enjoy your meal like eat slowly look at what you prepared it's so nice like whether it's just a noodle or a salad or 
the, the week before I bought so much pumpkin, I don't know what to do. I made like four pumpkin dishes and I still have some left. Oh, wow. I made pumpkin hummus. <laughs> I made what? so much Seriously? with it. Okay. I had so much pumpkin. I don't know what to do. I made soup twice. I made a vata karma once and I still have the vata karma left. And I made like pumpkin hummus, which is also still left. So that's again, really interesting. I've got to take the recipe from you. Pumpkin hummus just, looks so interesting. It's just roasted pumpkin with hummus. Like whatever you put on a hummus with this. Because I had so much and I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> and I'd seen at the pumpkin farm that they were selling pumpkin hummus. I was like, hmm, instead of one more soup, I can do this. And it's a better option. Because I ate so much of all of it. But yeah, it was just like, thinking about your meals saying okay you know you've taken so much time to prepare it just enjoy and eat slowly what rush are you in so I think those and just thinking that okay the food's not going anywhere if worst case you can eat it a bit later you don't have to eat all of it now so I think that also helped a bit super so um you know being very cognizant again being very aware as you are eating yeah before you are eating, after you are eating, basically just Pretty reflecting. Pretty much, yeah, all of it, yeah. <laughs> right? Just your pause and be like, hey, do you want to? Are you okay? Do you need some more? So, yeah, that helps. You bring up a very important point, which is this journey is all about making choices. And when you ask yourself the right questions, you can actually yeah. come up with the right answers. That works Yeah, pretty you. much, I guess, yeah. Right. Super. I like so, stuff that works for me. Yes. <laughs> so saving the best for last, uh, Aishu, we, your initial goal was to lose weight, see changes yes. in your body composition because you're very unhappy uh, with how you looked. You said, hey, yeah, yeah. I've been showing up consistently, but something I'm doing wrong. Things are not yeah. working out for me. You're not comfortable in your skin. Can you talk mm -hmm. about where you are today with that? Today, well... I've actually gotten a lot of compliments that I've lost a lot of weight in the last couple of months. So thank you. Wow. Um, but now it's, it's, it's also easier when someone gives me a compliment. I'm not like defensive or insecure or anything. I'm like, oh yeah, thank you for noticing. It's so nice. Of hey, you. I've bloody worked for it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Nice. It's like, hey, thank you. But uh, okay, like a lot Thanks of you. Thanks for acknowledging it. <laughs> keep your He's like, um, so my CEO came by, he's Indian. And he came by, he's like, oh, you've lost so much weight. You you look so different. Are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm doing very well, but thank you. <laughs> no problem here. Why do so, people think that somebody loses weight and they've got to be sick? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> nice. They can think whatever they want. Not my problem. Nice. But yeah, I can definitely see that I've lost weight. And I do fit into clothes that I think at least a few months ago were starting to get quite tight for me. So that's moving in the right direction. Mm. And the good thing that I liked was it was not a very quick weight loss. Because that usually worries me saying, hey, am I sick? Is there something wrong? Versus something being a little bit more gradual and over a longer time. And something that I can keep up. So it's not like a super strict diet that I can't eat anything. I eat as much as I can but I'm a little like you know I'm a little bit more conscious about what I'm eating so that's really amazing Aishu and it, it makes it helps I think it just mentally helps me and so, uh, the super amazing thing is you're, you're sticking to what you said in the initially right when you joined the program you said hey Sri Vidya I don't want this to be a restrictive one no, I want I this to be a gradual change something small that I can maintain Sustainability yeah. is important, right? All of those were your words, uh, the beginning yeah, of the program. Much. Yeah. How do you feel now, Aishu? Do you feel these are habits that you can sustain? So I think it's, I, I don't know if I, I would call it a habit yet. Maybe I'm not there. It'll take me a little longer. But smaller things like I that I wasn't doing before is like just consistently brushing at night before going to sleep or taking a breath before going to sleep or reading a book. Those have become habits. The meal plating, I would say, is more of an improvement that I'd like to stick to for a longer time to say, hey, this is actually a habit because I think six months is really short. But I think that the drinking water, consistently keeping up with exercise in like one form or the other, I think, yeah, that would definitely slowly become a habit. It's still a way to go because sometimes I know that, okay. Also, I've learned that I don't have to do everything by myself. 
So I know I want to eat healthy, but there are places that will sell a salad or sell a soup, which I can just buy and eat on days when I'm really exhausted. So again, knowing that has been really comforting because I think while growing up, it was always like, don't eat from out, don't do this, don't do that. So that pressure was all on me saying, I have to make everything at home and eat it. Mm. So that's, again, I don't have that so much now and it makes life much easier. Wow, so, letting go of old beliefs that were getting in the way of consistency, right? If you yeah, have yeah. to prepare all the meals all the time, then your consistency is not going to be hard. Yeah. It's, it's hard. a little yeah. hard. So I can, it's, there's this thing called too good to go where they give restaurant meals or grocery leftovers a little later in the day, but for much reduced prices. And in a lot of those, they give salad bowls, they give soups and sandwiches. So I was like, yeah, this is a nice option for me in case that day I'm too tired or I don't have enough energy to make something myself. So yeah, it's just nice to know that as well, instead of just not going for that option at all. Super. Yeah. So some things are a habit. Some things are in the process of becoming yeah. a habit. But yeah, given so that cool. you've been practicing these skills for almost six months now, right? Um, how confident do you feel about carrying this forward for the rest of your life? Pretty pra- good, keeping the practice actually. on. Pretty good, actually, because I don't see so much of a hindrance to following them. It's really easy. Like, even when I have guests over, they've just left, they've gone out now. For me, it's really easy to think, yeah, okay, I know they're there, but I can still make my good choices. And if we go out to eat, yeah, fine, I will eat out with them, no problem. But since I go to office and eat lunch, I will pack myself a salad. So dinner we do together, like we can do some cheese, some bread, whatever. But lunch, I'll make sure I have something good and healthy. And then I'll have my night protein. So one way or the other, I'm still able to eat healthy. Like this week felt a little stressful for me in terms of going for class. So I didn't. I was like, it's fine. Take this week off. Next week you go. You're not doing this on purpose, but you can't do everything, especially if your brain is not able to focus on that. You you just get too tired and it's not worth it. So I think it's sustainable. So I really like that. Super. And it helps me. So <laughs> Nice. Thanks for that feedback, Aishu. Um, we, right from the start, we talked about how this journey is all about imperfect actions. Yeah. It's about starting small, keeping it very practical, doable, yeah. easy. And we also talked about how this is not about critiquing yourself or uh, judging yourself yeah. into transforming your habits, but being very kind and compassionate with yourself as you transform, because this is not yeah. an easy journey, right? No, no, so I don't think how so. Do you think, how do you think uh, those resonated with you, Aishu? Imperfect actions, tiny actions? I mean, pretty good because... I've never had that I have to be perfect thing. So that already is in my favor. But just to practice it for myself, it's nice. Like, okay, at work, in school, fine. I don't give 100%. But even to myself, not having that high standard, it's really good just starting step by step. So again, I'm not the biggest fan of swimming, but I have bought swimming costumes now. And I was planning to buy a floaty to say, okay, I go to the swimming pool, just practice with my floaty two, three times up and down. I haven't gone yet. I still have to. But just two, three times I need to go up and down, just build that confidence by myself because it's not so scary. So that's what I want to do now. So, so you've yeah. taken taken these concepts to something that you're learning new and telling yeah. yourself, hey, it's okay to show up imperfectly. Yeah. Tiny actions. Just do, just do a little bit. Yeah, slowly. Maybe even if you don't get there, it's okay. But at least you're going and trying versus just sitting at home and imagining what it would be like. Just go, give it a shot. It's fine. Nothing will happen. So, Super. yeah, it's helpful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for sharing that, Aishu. Good luck. And please keep me posted about how that goes. Now, I will. Let's I will. Talk Thank about, you. Uh, uh, let's talk about your feedback on coaching, uh, Aishu. What aspects of the coaching program did you find most valuable or impactful? So, I am someone who likes feedback and suggestions. I usually don't take it personally if it's even negative because that means it's something I can improve on. So I really like that you would give me suggestions on things that, okay, I felt I was stuck, but I don't know what to do here. It's for me really nice to have that open discussion, not to feel like, hey, you know, you're going to, 
think of me bad or you're going to think of me wrong if i have stupid questions or just i really like back and forth i don't like okay one way information that i don't have to do anything about it i like to find things out by myself i like to respond to things by myself but i like someone i can talk to about so i really like that part of it and i really like the way you take me through like different steps one at a time and not just everything together so it takes some time first even i was like yeah why are we starting with small habits but i get it you know you you start small once you're comfortable enough that hey i can do this then you're able to apply that in other places as well so absolutely thank you so much for uh, sharing your honest feedback aishu yeah. um what was the best part about me as your coach that you're really open you're open to suggestions you're open to feedback you're open to doing things the way i would like i'm very sure that all your clients are not the same so you probably have to adjust yourself to each one and handle feedback for each one independently and it's really nice to just see that like i don't think you take it personally if i told you hey i'm not this kind of person could you please help me out in a certain different way and then you'd come up with some idea of how i can tailor my life to my end goals so that's actually quite nice so the customization of the practices and uh, you know changing course based on where or just like supporting me on where i am is is already quite nice just to see okay. that yeah fantastic let's talk about your future goals aishu what are your goals and plans moving forward in terms of maintaining your progress and continuing okay. your health and fitness journey so when it comes to maintaining my progress it's just i like you said it's just a conscious effort and conscious thought i have learned so much that earlier okay maybe i could always read it online and find out but to actually know how to apply it and to think in a certain way that hey i'm traveling but i can eat healthy or fine i didn't eat healthy today it's fine next meal let me see where my nutrients can come from or okay like the last couple of weeks i didn't eat enough fruits and veggies so maybe let me up my fruits and veggies now because yeah it it will not 100% make up but it's a start it's not something that's over it's just like a conscious thought that is positive it's not putting me or making me feel bad about myself it's more like you said a growth mindset and i like that and i think that would continue so yeah so uh, sporting a growth and a proactive mindset has been super useful and also not seeing any setback or uh, failure as something really bad but as an opportunity to learn from it and yeah. see how you can tweak the process going forward right yeah like i told you like suddenly uh, I, a few weeks ago when i came back from singapore i was eating a lot i was binge eating i noticed that and, but i couldn't tell where it was coming from so it took me some time to figure out hey this is i am upset because of this reason and now okay i can give myself the space to heal and then go ahead so that's okay again like you said it's not a judgmental place it's not putting myself down it's just realizing hey this is something that you can work on and fix so that's actually quite nice for me so yeah. um, in a nutshell uh, aishu how would you summarize your overall experience and achievements during this coaching program i would say it's been overall really positive because i just understood at the start of the program you and i would work together for a period of 6 months and then we would discuss food nutrition but i didn't really understand the extent of it so now i see it's a lot broader then of course you worked with me through some of the challenges i was facing at work or just not work and outside as well so it's been a lot more broader than that and i think i needed that i needed to see that hey just because i'm afraid of something doesn't mean i can't start small or i don't have to like block that thing so one thing is i'm thinking of studying further and appa was always saying do mba do mba i was not convinced about it but now i was like okay you know let me go and at least see what is there before i decide whether it's a yes or a no Wow. So not again not restricting myself and saying okay you know let's go see maybe it's not the right fit for me and that's okay and i can go from there so yeah it's quite nice wow you really uh, become more open uh, i should because i remember this conversation during the pro- program when 
you said yeah. hey my dad wants me to do this but i'm not too sure but now you, it's kind of you're more open yeah now i'm okay you know I, i will go speak and i actually went for some mba event so basically you go speak to a lot of uh, representatives from the school i was like yeah i want to go talk to you guys see if this is actually something i want to do or not and then and then i can make a decision i can make an informed decision instead of just saying no so yeah that's i think a really really nice part of it super and so, what would you like to celebrate uh, or acknowledge as you graduate from this phase of your journey i should that i'm a lot more independent now and that i can do a lot more things by myself i mean i could do it before i just didn't know what to do before it so i know what and how and it feels really good so yes thank interesting you. so you had the why you had you were clear yeah. about why you wanted to go on this journey but the what yeah. and the how were very unclear to you and now that is kind of yeah now it's a lot easier circle. yeah now it's Super. a lot better. congratulations so, aichu thank you for happy and one final question what would you like to say to the women who are watching this video and they are hesitating to invest in, them, in themselves or um, take help from somebody how what would you say to them so for me it was a really simple question do i want the help do i think i can do this by myself and for me it was no also because i had mental blocks before saying okay healthy eating means only doing this or only doing that so i had like a lot of restrictions myself before but i think for me it's better to take someone's help and get someone's guidance because it just you just learn so much and i think that's a really nice thing to have for yourself that you get to learn so much and keep it up it's not just that okay i went for 3 months and then i'm done i won't i won't do it again but it was great for the time no it's something that continues till much later and i know i can keep it up Thank so you. that's that's good your confidence yeah. is very very palpable uh, i should thank you so no, much no but it's been good <laughs> i like it <laughs> so, uh, thank you thank you i mean again uh, this is a skill building program this is a program which educates you about the science behind the science and art of mindful eating uh, the science behind nutrition yeah. exercise basically just unlocks all of these elements that seem very confusing or very unclear to you about how to piece together including yeah. stress management regulating your emotions sleep habits unless all of this come together it's not going to be sustainable ladies so please understand that this is not just about focusing on your diet or your exercise but all of these other elements like your mindful eating techniques water intake sleep and recovery yeah. stress management all of these come together to help you function to your optimum best and go after the weight loss that you are seeking because then it becomes a way of life and not a means to an end you know this is just yeah. how you are going to start behaving from here on right so yeah. thank you so much for sharing your oh, valuable thank you i should be in a wonderful journey and with i'm you so too. happy thank you. that you trusted me uh, with your journey uh, it's a of huge course. responsibility and and i'm so happy to see you do so well at the end of 6 months i yeah. should also thank okay. you to us good i learned so much absolutely it's been so, yeah. super helpful and my doors are always open i should if at any point uh, you have doubts questions or you feel like hey you know what i have new challenges and i need your help again I'm absolutely available. Okay. Of course. Thank you. Good Thank luck. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.